What's the word, y'all? Welcome back to Kenny For Real. We are finally doing this Philadelphia 76er video. A lot of Philly fans been mad at me because I've been teasing it at the end of every video for about a week. And they're like, Kenny, we need you to talk about Philly. And I will. Philly, every single season, I feel like I make the same video where we try to figure out if they are contenders or pretenders before the season starts. And I'll be the first to admit it. I bet last year. I had them winning the Easter Conference. I had them going to the championship. I don't remember if I had them winning at all, but I had them on that upper echelon of NBA team. And of course, it did not go that way. Um, first round exit. And we'll talk about all of that. And I think now I am way more wise than I was back then. Be sure to leave a like on the video. Subscribe if you're new. At 4 o'clock Eastern time, uh, my merch is going on sale, our called game merch. Um, it's relevant to this channel because we'll probably reband this channel to called game. So if that sounds some like something you're interested in, uh, it's going on pre-order starting at 4 and it'll be live for a couple weeks. So. If you're interested, link is in the description. Um, I'm Like I was saying, I'm way more wise now than I was last year. I think last year I kind of had this idea, and I think a lot of people did when we picked Philly. It's like, sure, Tobias Harris' contract looks disgusting. Um, sure, you had to get rid of Jimmy Butler, but you got back Josh Richardson. And sure, Al Horford will probably look weird alongside Joel B. But in our mind, we were like, they'll figure it out. Talent is talent. And at the end of the day, that is the only thing you really need to win basketball games, Right. I'm way more wise now. I think that the overall team construction is way more important um, than just getting talent. Think about the team that won a championship this year, the Lakers. Sure, they have two of the top five, top six players in the NBA. But after that, we always question, who's that third player? Who was their, who was their third best player last season? You can make the, the case that it was Rondo in the playoffs. But throughout the course of the season, there was never really a third best player for their team. But at the end of the day, they put together a roster that fit well together and played well together. We saw with the, with the Clippers last season, we thought that just because they brought in these two superstar level players they already had a team that was pretty good that they'd be able to come out and win a championship it just doesn't really work like that there's chemistry things there's ego things and they need to have solidified roles and they didn't really have that with the LA Clippers and that's something we also found out the 76 is that you can't just put talent on the floor and think it's all going to mesh especially when you have such a unique talent at your point guard and that is Ben Simmons where he is so much different than the average point guard that you need to really orchestrate a team team around him that fits his strengths and and caps his weaknesses so they made some moves this offseason started with firing Brett Brown and I, I recognize that Brett Brown was super important to Philly um, being there for the process and I'm happy that they gave him a few years after the process to try to make his case to stay the coach and at the end of the day they may have uh, ran out of rope when it came to to Brett Brown and, and they brought in Doc Rivers I don't know how much of a better coach Doc Rivers is in 2020 compared to what Brett Brown was but we'll figure it out um, just having a new coach in there will matter and then the biggest surprise is that after Daryl Moore he stepped down from the Houston Rockets about a week later he signed to be the top guy in Philly and we're like yo Daryl Morey is a dude that averages I think the number was averaging eight trades a season in the 14 years he was with the or the Rockets or however many years eight eights which means that he was about to come in and he's about to boom break it down because at the end of the day this team had bad contracts it had just players that didn't fit together and the the future was kind of grim people had always brought in do they want to trade Joe well do they want to trade Ben Simmons and Daryl Moore was like not at least not yet we're going to try to put together a team that every NBA fan knows that this team should look like going into like we know that with a guy like Ben Simmons if he doesn't have shooters around him he's going to be less effective how the heck did I expect that team to win games when they didn't have much shooting around him Josh Richardson good good shooter uh, Tobias Harris good good shooter but like nothing great and they made those changes. The first thing that Daryl Morey did was an absolute amazing deal to get rid of Al Horford. I do believe that Al Horford still has a lot left in the tank. Again, the Philly mess just wasn't really there. And I think that he can contribute. And Sam Pressy may turn around and turn Al Horford to another first-round pick because he's going to do the old CP3 thing, go out next season, be solid, and some team is going to want him. But then again, he has such a big contract and, and looked so bad last season, it felt like Daryl Morey would have to throw in two to two first round picks at the least and maybe a young asset to get rid of Al Horford and at the end of the day he got it done for one pick and not only that he got back a quality NBA player in Danny Green that fits what Philly should be wanted to do Danny Green again the butt of a lot of jokes but he does shoot the three ball well most of the time and he does play defense he's may not be as quick as he was back when he was in San Antonio but he's still a plus defender and he's still a plus floor spacer for your team exactly what Ben Simmons needed so you already you trade that and that's just a beautiful thing you able to slide Tobias Harris back to the four because the four has been where Tobias Harris has had the most success they brought in Doc Rivers to coach that coached um 
Tobias Harris when Tobias Harris was at his best. It's it looking is looking solid. But not only that, he made a couple more moves. He traded Josh Richardson, and Josh Richardson is a good NBA player. This is going to be one of those trades where I feel like both teams ended up with with what they wanted, right? Josh Richardson goes to Dallas, and now Dallas has a more defensive-oriented backcourt made for Luka Doncic, who can still score the ball a little bit. And the 76ers get shooting, like literally one of the most lethal shooters in NBA history as far as percentage goes. Um, and now they have a lineup is what I'm guessing the lineup's going to look like. Ben Simmons, Seth Curry, Danny Green, Tobias, and Joel Embiid. And the reason I am laughing, because I had saw a screenshot on Twitter of people on the jump or first take, I, I get them all mixed up, where they were projecting a starting lineup for the 76ers, and they had Dwight Howard starting at the four. And it just makes me laugh. They're like, I don't know how you could go on national TV and talk about Philadelphia starting Dwight Howard at the four. How? Anyway. That team has way more space than they ever had before. And when you look at the stats for Philly last season, they were a good uh, three-point percentage team, but the volume of which they, they shot three-pointers was not up to par with the current NBA. Dear Morey's a great guy about his analytics. He's going to want layups. He's going to want three-point shots. And Seth Curry and Danny Green helped that a lot. And now Tobias Harris has a lot a lot more room to, to work. Um, you're going to see, at least I hope you're going to see, a lot of DHOs with Seth Curry and, and Joel Embiid. It won't be on the level of J.J. Redick. J.J. Redick is such a good DHO player. Um, and I don't think Seth Curry has that same playmaking and ball handling ability. But they should definitely... Definitely think about that because the most lethal thing Philly did during that run where they had the doop 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 -doo from Kawhi Leonard is when they had that dribble handoff between J.J. Redick and Joel Embiid. And when, I listen, when you listen to them talk to each other um, on J.J. Redick's podcast, J.J. was like, I, I, I will never play with a center as good as you are on those dribble handoffs. And then Joel Embiid was like, and I'll never play with a guard that's as good as that. Like, they had that type of connection. And Philly fans should be hoping that Seth Curry can do the similar things to what J.J. Redick did on that front. So Daryl Morey comes in. He makes these two significant trades where now the top end of your team looks different than what it did last year. And then they, they actually draft really well, too. Um, um, there are some concerns when I have a Philly, like, other than Tobias Harris, they don't really have a shot creator anymore, um, and I'm guessing they're going to rely on Ben Simmons being that, but obviously Ben Simmons is limited to the f what, seven feet from the rim, um, at least at this point in his career, but that, that would be, like, my main concern, and they don't have that off the bench either. I would love for them to end up with a player that can shot create off the bench. You know, I'm not saying Lou Will like, but, like, a guy where you're like, okay, we could give him the ball, and he can get us a bucket off the bench. Because they don't really have that at the moment. I like Furkan Korkmaz, but he's similar in a similar mode of like the Steph Currys and the, and the Danny Greens, where he's mostly going to be a catch-and-shoot guy. They don't have the guys to create for them all, themselves, and that's a little bit um, concerning. I do believe this could be a season where Joel Embiid bounced back heavily. Uh, the last time we saw Joel Embiid in the bubble and in the playoffs, it just, it just wasn't great. Um, you wanted to see him dominate you know, Boston, because they didn't really have that back-end defense that you would think would be successful against Joel Embiid. But shout-out to Brad Stevens, Daniel Tyson, all those guys. They played it very well. You want to see him dominate again. And going into last season, he has said his, his real goals was to win Defensive Player of the Year or win the MVP. And obviously, he didn't live up to any of those. I don't even think he was an All-NBA player at the end of the day. So this is a resurgence season for him. And honestly, this might be this might be the last year that we see the Joel and B. Ben Simmons experiment because we know that Daryl Morey is not afraid to pull the trigger on a trade. He's not crazy enough to come in and make that big time trade a month after getting the job. He don't want to do that. But if we get a year into it and Philly doesn't perform to the to this way we want them to, to perform, I wouldn't be surprised if Daryl Morey was shopping those two guys, one of them two guys, and they try to pick who to build around. Me and my guys have this conversation on podcast a lot when we talk about Philly. Like, if you were the general manager of the 76ers, who would you rather build around? Joel Embiid is an amazing talent, offensively and defensively. But we know he has his questions with his motor, and we know he has his questions with his injury. And then Ben Simmons is such a, a natural talent of the game of basketball, but you know he has that big limitation of not being able to hit a jump shot. Both of them have pros and cons to it, and I know some people that would pick Ben Simmons and be like, hey, get Ben a bunch of shooters. And I know people that would pick Joel Embiid because he is that nice. And at the end of the day, I don't know. I do not envy Daryl Moore because he might have to make the decision soon. He just might. I don't know if Philly has done this offseason. Um, it was some rumors that some players could be on the move and they might be willing to look at, but I don't want to just make videos talking about potential rumors, you know. Um, Philly is an interesting team. Are the Philadelphia 76ers contenders? 
Oh, the Philadelphia 76ers contenders. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would say yes. Um, some of the teams they will battle with in the Eastern Conference, they get worse. Maybe not that much worse, but you can't tell me Toronto losing their two big man rotation that was was very, very great for them in the last couple of seasons. Um, though they did replace it with the GOAT Aaron Baines. It's just like losing those two players does hurt. Um, Boston lost Gordon Hayward for nothing. Some of the top end teams got worse. And I would argue that Philly got better. So I would say they are contenders. More than if they didn't make those changes going to the offseason, they would not be contenders in my book. But I would say they are now. Let me know what you think. Do you see Philadelphia 76 as contenders or pretenders? All of this could change. Once I see that first night of the NBA season and see how they're working with things, I may switch and be like, bro, these dudes are pretenders. Um, but again, another season where they are one of the most interesting teams in the league. Gotta love Philly, right? Be sure to leave a like, subscribe if you're new, link in the description to the, to the merch, and uh, I'll see y'all tomorrow. Peace.